So before we get into the particular consonant sounds, we first need to talk about cognates. Uh, right now, I'd like you to make um, an F sound and feel your vocal folds or your larynx. So put your fingers on your throat and sustain an F. You'll notice that you don't feel any vibration in your vocal folds. Now, do the same thing and sustain a V. You'll notice you'll feel some vibration uh, with your vocal folds. Now go back and forth between F and V. Go. You'll notice that when you're doing your F sound, you shouldn't feel vibration. And when you're doing the V, you will feel vibration. Do the same thing with S and Z. Go back and forth between S and Z and fill your larynx. You'll notice that as you're doing the S sound, you don't feel vibration. And as you're doing the Z, you do. You will also notice, let's go back and forth between F and V again. You'll notice that your articulation doesn't change. So how you're forming the F sound is exactly the same with the articulators as the way you're forming the V sound. And the only thing that does change is you don't feel vibration on the F, but you do feel vibration on the V. So cognates, by definition, are two consonant sounds made exactly the same way with the articulators. In other words, you form them the same way with your mouth. The only difference is one is unvoiced, in this case the F and the S, unvoiced, which means the vocal folds are apart and not vibrating, and one is voiced, and Z, which means the vocal folds are together and vibrating. So one is unvoiced, and one is voiced, and the only thing that changes are the vocal folds. Now, feel your larynx. And we're very slowly going to say this word, seat, seat. Now, all vowel sounds are going to be voiced. In other words, your vocal folds are going to be together and vibrating. But the S sound is unvoiced, and the T sound is unvoiced. So see if you can feel that as you're doing the S sound and as you're doing the T sound, that there's no vibration. So fill your larynx and slowly say, seat. Let's do it again. Seat. So you feel when you do the S and the T that there's not the vibration in your larynx as there is when you're doing the E sound. So in addition to vibrating many times per second, your vocal folds are also coming apart every time you do voiceless consonant sounds. So as we go through and do these phonetic symbols for the consonant sounds, we'll be talking about which sounds are cognates, which sounds are voiceless, and which sounds are voiced. Okay, we have our first group of consonant sounds. P, B, M, H, and W. All these are made with the lips. So the phonetic symbol for the P sound, regardless of how it's spelled, is a lowercase p, P. The phonetic symbol for the B sound is a lowercase b, B. These two sounds are cognates. That is voiceless, p, and that is voiced, b. The phonetic symbol for m is a lowercase m. The phonetic symbol for the voiceless wh sound, hua, hua, which isn't a sound that uh, we do much anymore, is the voiceless WH sound is this, hua, hua. 
And the symbol for the voiced W sound, which is basically what we do today with all of those sounds, is just a lowercase w. P, B, M, H, W. Let's talk about this sound a little bit. So you have two words here, which, which. When a word is, makes the W sound and it's spelled W-H, that's when you can use that voiceless hw sound. And it sounds like this, hw, which, which. Also for words like what, when, why, This sound really isn't done very much anymore. Most of us just say what, when, where, well, where, why, which, etc. without the wh sound. Um, when it's not spelled with an H after it, it's just a normal W, that's when you use the lowercase w. Next we have f and v. The sound of fa is a lowercase f, fa, and the sound for v is a lowercase v, fa, va, and these are cognates, fa, va. Now feel your larynx. And uh, very slowly say, think, this word, think. And now slowly say, this. Once again, think and this. Even though they're spelled the same way with the TH, you'll notice that they are different sounds. If I said, think, that, didn't, that wouldn't sound right to you. And if I said this, that wouldn't sound right. So you hear that this sound here is voiceless. If you say this sound very slowly, think, you'll feel that there's no vibration in your larynx. So this voiceless TH sound is this symbol. Now this symbol is actually called a theta. Theta. Fill your larynx and very slowly say the word theta. Theta. You'll feel that when you say the word, in other words, you say the name of the symbol, that there's no vibration on that TH sound. That's how you can remember that that's the voiceless TH. The symbol for the voiced TH, as in this, is like that. Think this. Next we have Ted doesn't know Lori. All of these consonant sounds are made with the tip of the tongue to the gum ridge. Consonant sound for the T, no matter how it's spelled, is a lowercase t. The phonetic symbol for the D sound is a lowercase d. These two constant sounds are cognates. Fill your larynx and say t, d, t, d. You'll feel that there's vibration on the D sound and no vibration on the T before the vowel. The, consonants, the phonetic symbol for the N is a lowercase n. And the phonetic symbol for the L, la, lori, no matter how it's spelled, is a lowercase l. So you never capitalize these, these uh, phonetic symbols. Even if the word is capitalized, since it's just the sound we're talking about, you don't capitalize the phonetic symbol. Next we have these sounds, suz, so this is the s, zoo. Z, sh, should, 
Occasionally, that's going to come in the middle of that word. Reap riches. So, the symbol for the S sound is a lowercase s. The symbol for the Z, as in zoo, is a lowercase z. The symbol for sh, as in should, sheep, shower, is a new symbol. And it goes below the line of the page. So it's like a big S. You start here, go down below the line of the page, and you'll loop up like that. So the line of the page is going to be right here, and that SH goes below the line of the page. Uh, this next symbol is the sound of Z, and it usually comes in the middle of words like treasure, pleasure, and it's also a new symbol. It goes below the line of the page. It looks like a cursive Z, but it doesn't make the sound of Z. It makes sound of Z. And then the consonant R sound, so in other words, the R that has a vowel sound after it, so the R you can't remove from the word, the consonant R sound is a lowercase r. Now, these two are cognates, so Z, and these two are cognates. We're going to go through, and I'm just going to write these symbols one more time, just so you see how to write them. Okay, once again, so this is the sh sound. Sh and this is the z as in treasure. Treasure. Now this next symbol is the a y sound. Now be careful because it looks like a lowercase j, but this makes the sound of y, as in your yellow. Goes below the line of the page. That's y, as in your, yummy, you, year, y. There's one more term to give you regarding the y sound, and that is a liquid u. And a liquid u makes the sound of y plus oo, u. So it literally makes the sound of y-o-u, u. You use this liquid u in words like few. Were we to transcribe that word, it would look like this. See how this y sound, if you took it out, instead of saying fee, fee, you, it would sound like foo. So this liquid U is used in words like music, computer, Utah, view. So you just keep that in mind that you're going to have some words that are going to take that liquid U sound. Next we have our, our constant sounds that are made with the back of the tongue to the soft palate. K, G, and N. Mm. So the sound of K as in can. Again, it doesn't matter how it's spelled. Oftentimes this sound is spelled with a C, but you always transcribe it with a lowercase K. K, K, K. It's voiced cognate. G is a lowercase g sound. These are cognates. Kaga. And the sound of ng is in sing is a new symbol. Start with an n and you loop up to make it a little g there. I'll just write that symbol one more time. Mm, that's the ng is in sing. Sing. The H sound as in he's and behind, just do a lowercase h for both of those. It's 
is a lowercase h for the ha sound. Our last two symbols are going to be ch and j. And they're actually created by taking two consonant sounds and putting them together, almost like a diphthong. So for church, ch, you take the T sound and you combine it with the SH. And those two symbols make ch, ch, ch. So you'll notice the ch sound is made on both of those. Ch, er, ch. Its voiced cognate is j. voice cognate of t is d. The voice cognate of sh is j. So that is j, as in judge. And you'll notice it's j and j. Both of those spelled differently, but they both make the same sound. J, uh, j. Ch, er, ch, ch, uh, j. Those are all the phonetic symbols for um, English. So now you can transcribe any English word and have at it. Start practicing.